I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else could do. I love to tell the story. It will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story for those who know it best seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing the new, new song, twill be the old, old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story. It will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. And now we continue what is our new tradition, which is if you have a candle at home, either a real candle or a battery candle, that we will light those together. And as we do, we, we do this sacred act, which is acknowledging that our homes become our sacred space, that our homes even though they're separate, are connected through our intention to be together at this time. And that as we light our candles, we open to the light of Christ. And our prayer is that the light will radiate from our own lives, from our own homes, around the world. And that there will be peace, there will be healing, there will be presence, especially for those who are suffering. So let us pray. O oh God, on this Sunday after Easter, we pray that you be with us. Help us to open our hearts to the grace that meets us here in our homes as we shelter in place. May we embrace your call to witness to hope and to offer peace to a broken world in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. Be with us as we work for a world where everyone is safe, no one is targeted, and everyone is included in the circle of love and community. Help us to open our hearts to your peace so we may be sources of peace for others. Amen. We welcome you this morning to our worship service and we're so grateful that you're here and a part of our family and we're so glad to see Lucille and Rose and we love to say whenever we gather, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We do have a few announcements. We continue to have worship services on Sunday and we do have... Um, a Wednesday social hour that uh, is from noon to 1 p.m. here on Zoom. And look at our Wednesday or Tuesday e-blast to give you all the information for those. It's a chance to catch up with other folks like we do before and after our services as well. And if you have a picture of your home altar that you've put together during our season of caring for COVID-19, we invite you to share your picture 
there's mine on the left and there's uh, Roberto's on the right, but I haven't received anybody else's pictures of their home altar. Let it be an expression of your faith and your, um, your devotions and uh, let it be something that gives you a, a little taste of home from home. <clears throat> or your church home from home. Of course, the uh, one great hour of sharing um, was taken uh, last week. I think you can still give online if you want to do that, and we encourage you to do so. But those links are in the newsletter that we sent out for the month of April. If you have any question about that, you can email or, or text Christy, myself, or Elaine, and we'll get you that information as well. And then, of course, we want to welcome you to church. We uh, are so grateful that you're here, so grateful to keep our community going and our ability to be able to keep checking in and support one another during this time. It's important for us to be able to continue to create community however we can during this time. And if you find yourself uh, going on a, a, a downward cycle um, for whatever reason, it's okay to reach out to Pastor Christy or me or your care team leader or anyone else and so we worship we welcome you to worship this day where you are invited to be able to live out your faith and uh, to celebrate God's love here as we recognize God's amazing grace love and even reclaiming us even after those times in our life when we don't get it good morning and the theme for this morning is the road to Emmaus. And some of you may be familiar with that story. It's one of the resurrection appearances on this first Sunday after Easter. And the story is pretty straightforward. It's two people leaving Jerusalem after the crucifixion, having heard of the resurrection. And Jesus appears and walks beside them, though they don't recognize him. And so the 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 power of the story is that these people do not recognize Jesus until he shares a meal with them. And then the famous passage that says, as Jesus broke the bread, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And so this morning, part of what we will explore is how we recognize the risen Christ, how we as Easter people are able to continue to encounter this presence, this extraordinary aliveness, the resurrected Jesus in our lives. And so as we begin our service, may we open to the mystery that is Easter, that is resurrection, that is the presence of Christ with us. Amen. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, Help us to take this time to center on you. For you made us, you gave us life and you continue to be with us every moment. Hear this assurance from God to the tune of amazing grace. Be still. Oh, heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. Come now and come and sin to hear. Your mind secure and free. Into your care we offer now our worries, fears, and strife, we turn to you and know you're near, your light, our love and love.
please join me in the call to worship. Meet us, Lord, on the road to Emmaus. Guide us on the path toward our destination. And renew our strength as we continue to walk and commune with you. Open our eyes so we see the signs of your presence around us. Open our hearts so we may receive your peace and love. And empower us to pass on to others. The grace you have shared with us so freely. With grateful hearts, we worship God. Amen. Amen. This is our hymn, uh, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, and Will has the words on the screen. We're going to do verse one and verse two. So sing along. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, singing bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. And we now have an opening prayer. Please join me. Risen Christ, yours is the heartbeat of grace deep within us, the light step beside us on our journeys, the footprints in the sand revealing how you carry us when we grow weary. Yours is the face we perceive when we glimpse one another's holiness. Yours are the promises that life conquers death, that goodness is stronger than evil, and that we can build our lives around your shining truth. Open our eyes so we may see you today as we shelter in our homes. Amen. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul. And bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with you. And also with yeah. you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Everybody. Peace be with <laughs> you, <laughs> everyone. Peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you.
It's a Christ, everybody. Christ. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ is you. Peace of Christ you. Peace of Christ to everyone. So good to see you. And you. Peace I see you. Peace on your birthday, Joan. Thank you. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Peace, Joanne. Peace to everyone. Peace. Peace, Clarice. Can she hear us? Peace, Jimmy. Peace, Clarice. Peace, Clarice. Peace, Clarice. Peace, Clarice. Peace, Clarice. Peace, Clarice. We can hear Clarice. We know that voice anywhere. <laughs> Hello, Pat. You made it all Hello. Up. How did you Hello, make it? Pat. Hello, Pat. Hello, guys. Pat, hey, Pat right. Vines made it. Hi, Pat. How are you? Hi. I'm fine. Good. Being Henri. Right. We would expect nothing less. <laughs> so glad you found a way to connect, Pat. So, well, me too. I, I felt out of place. Yes. And now you're right where you belong. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I better get on my scooter and go down to the church. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would be there right now. No, but that's okay. <laughs> Peace, Ingrid. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to move into uh, muting again and uh, moving towards our prayers. Come and find the quiet center in the crowded lives we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the frame where we are freed. Clear the chaos and the clutter. Clear our eyes that we can see. All the things that really matter, be at peace and simply be. We're so grateful that you're here and um, we're going to use our chat room for our, um, our joys and concerns. And, uh, you know, uh, just another reminder that our prayer families this week are Doris and James Cassetti, Hazel Coward, First Presbyterian Church Berkeley, and San Francisco Chinese Congregational UCC. And so what are our joys and concerns that we have with us today? A prayer from Donald, uh, joy is my job is looking to open up soon. We just have uh, to do precautions because of what's going on. I feel like emotionally I've hit a brick wall and need prayers. That's normal to be feeling right now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Other joys and concerns you wanna share? You can also unmute yourself and share if you want. If uh, one or two people do it at a time, we should be good. Or raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Elaine uh, shares a joy, grateful for work this month. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Our prayers. Merdell. I can hear you now, Merdell. Okay, just appreciation to Joanne for connecting Clarice to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And, and Joanne put on the chat room, Clarice says prayers for the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Teresa Chavez Sauceda shares grateful for a window visit with my mom yesterday. Oh. Amen. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lucille has a prayer. 
You're Thank unmuted, you. Lucille. Thankful that I'm able to be here to church with you nice people. Oh. I long to be here with you. Thank God. We're so grateful we can see you and hear your voice today, too. Lord, in your mercy, your hear our prayers. Prayers for Bill, who's dealing with eustachian tube dysfunction in his good ear. It's affecting his hearing and marriage. <laughs> Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. We can kid each other even in prayers of concern and joy, huh? All right. Did I see a... Uh, Judy. I'm hitting the mute button. Are you hitting it at the same time, Judy? Judy? There we go. Now we can hear you. I need prayers for my sister. She's not doing well at all. Oh. And I don't, I can't see her, but something's not right. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if she's had another stroke. I'm not sure, but she's not doing well. And she's younger than I am. Prayers for Judy's sister. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Definitely. Sully. Yes. Um, Ethan has taken on a new job. He was let go by the parks. He's now working at the uh, Japantown Safeway. So he's right in the mix. So we're prayers for his health, mental and physical. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Jane, I kept muting you. There you go, Jane. Okay. It's just very disturbing to me how the occupant of the White House is making lots of uh, extensive rumblings about being a dictator, how he has total control over everything and the states, and he's blocking our efforts to shelter in place. And uh, my concern is he's going to also block the presidential election in November. Well, let's not ho hope not, but uh, it is strange things that happen, especially during times of crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Definitely. Did I see? Yeah, Bill and Barbara. Yes. Pat wanted us to ask for prayers for a friend of her, uh, Norma's dad named George, who is in a nursing home. He's 94 and he now has COVID-19. Prayers for George, who now has COVID-19 at 94. Lord, in your mercy. Here are, Here are prayers. prayers. Here are prayers for my friend Patrick Evans, who was the interim executive director of Morelite Presbyterians, whose father died of cancer. Just last night, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Christy, yeah, jump in there. Yeah. Um, for all of the people on the front lines, hospital workers, including Tushambi, who's behind the scenes, but working to maintain staffing in the hospital, for the teachers, for the delivery people, for all of the people who are really, really stressed and pressured right now because of what they're doing to support the rest of us. Definitely, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayers. Jane has another one. Oh, I was just, I was just Lord saying in your, our prayers. Lord in your mercy, have Lord in your mercy. I would prayers. add also to pray for the first responders to Christie's list, because they're out and there. For the, and for the first responders, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Prayers that the curve will flatten around the country and everyone will be safe and healthy from Donald. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Murdell, go ahead. Can you unmute yourself? Go ahead, Murdell. Oh, okay, just getting there. A uh, friend of some of us, Sonny Krosky, had delivered a beautiful baby girl yesterday morning. It's just encouraging to see um, new life in this time and just hope for a, a 
future for her and for all of us. Definitely. Lord, in your mercy, hear are our prayers. For my nephew and his wife, who are um, in the hospital having a baby um, expedited, <laughs> per se, uh, uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Okay, uh, Greg, is that you? Did you have a prayer? No? Okay, M maybe he was just uh, touching his brow. Uh, prayer from Carol. Prayers for my cousin who recently lost her grandson due to an auto accident, leaving behind four children, an eight-year-old, six-year-old, three-year-old, and a one-month-old. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for governors and mayors who are working hard to coordinate wise responses to COVID. All over the country, definitely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Janice Campbell, hold on a second. I see your hand. Just a second. Let me unmute you. Did that work? Can you unmute yourself, Janice? There you go. Go ahead. Now? You're on, Janice. Okay. I like prayers for Sherry Percy. I called her yesterday, and she's having a real struggle with her, her treatment because of all the things that we saw. And so she's even thinking, I won't do it anymore. We don't want to go there. But that's the thing that's the for her. So prayers for Sherry Persing as she continues in her health issues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Our, prayer, our care team is meeting at 1130 this afternoon or just late morning. And um, so uh, we hope that you hear from your care team members soon. Um, <clears throat> seeing Banu, I'm reminded of our continued prayers for India. And for the many people who don't work near their home and who don't have a place to shelter in place. Um, and uh, we pray that uh, all of the people in India where there's so much crowding will be able to find the food and the help that they need during this time. Lord, in your mercy. And mom, is that Carol Hosmer? Uh, that's Judy. Judy. Go ahead, Judy. We can hear you. Uh, prayers for all our uh, politicians that they can work together instead of at each other and bring us to an open back to ourselves again. Amen to that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Definitely. Not seeing anyone else, we're going to move into um, our morning prayers. And there's some inside your, your uh, bulletin. And I'm going to invite you to just say aloud in the muteness of your space any of those for whom these phrases are true. Oh God, we pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for all of those who have lost uh, family members due to the virus or other natural causes. We pray for those who are sick of any disease and pray for their healing. We pray for those who are recovering from whatever that sickness or healing might be, body, mind, and soul. We pray for those who are caring for loved ones who are sick at home. And we pray for caregivers of all kinds, for those that are in assisted living, facilities for those that are um, alone as well, for those that are caring for persons in hospitals and nursing homes. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are separated from loved ones, especially those near death. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. And for those who are feeling alone 
and isolated in this time. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are helping and are so very tired, O oh Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort, for those living without shelter, and especially for those living in the parking lot program at our church even now, Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are afraid, and for those who are uh, grieving loss of anything in their lives, whether um, that's a loved one or just the fear of not knowing what the future holds, and for those who have lost their jobs, O oh Lord, hear our prayers. We thank you, O oh God, that you continue to be with us whenever we call and whatever our needs are, and we pray that you would continue to remind us that we are your church, that we have the ability to reach out and be the church without walls, that we are able to be able to live out what it means to be little Christ in this world. And we thank you for the ability and the invitation to serve in his name, to create this new world that he has invited us to be co-creators with, to make a world and a kingdom of compassion and justice, of love and service. And so, oh God, we thank you for all of your good gifts and we thank you for the ability to be invited to pray this radical prayer that Jesus prayed with his disciples saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrim journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to keep us safe. I want Jesus to keep us safe when the COVID-19 keeps us sheltered in place. Lord, I want Jesus to keep us safe. I want Jesus to walk with me. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. When my head is bowed in sorrow, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me, walk with me. The scripture reading this morning is from Luke 24, verses 13 through 35. This is the story about the road to Emmaus. On that same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village named Emmaus, about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem. And they were talking to each other about all the things that had happened. As they talked and discussed, Jesus himself drew near and walked along with them. They saw him, but somehow did not recognize him. Jesus said to them, what are you talking about to each other as you walk along? 
they stood still with sad faces. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have been happening there these last few days? What things, he asked. The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. This man was a prophet and was considered by God and by all the people to be powerful in everything he said and did. Our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and he was crucified. And we had hoped that we would be one who was going to set Israel free. Besides all that, this is now the third day since it happened. Some of the women of our group surprised us. They went at dawn to the tomb, but could not find his body. They came back saying they had seen a vision of angels who told them that he is alive. Some of our group went to the tomb and found it exactly as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, how foolish you are. How slow you are to believe everything the prophet said. Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? And Jesus exp explained to them what he said about himself in all the scriptures, beginning with the books of Moses and the writings of all the prophets. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther, but they held him back saying, stay with us. The day is almost over and it's getting dark. So he went in to stay with them. He sat down to eat with them. He took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, wasn't it like a fire burning in us when he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They got up at once and went back to Jerusalem where they found the 11 disciples gathered together with the others and saying, the Lord is risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. The two then explained to them what had happened on the road and how they had recognized the Lord when he broke the bread. We celebrate the written word of scripture. Thanks be to God. We celebrate the living word, Christ among us. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Please 
Please join me in prayer. Holy God, on this Sunday after Easter, we are seeking to see the risen Christ, to feel the presence of the risen Christ in the world that is in such need of solace and peace and healing. As we turn our eyes and hearts to scripture, may we learn to see more clearly. For we pray in your holy name. Amen. And so it is the Sunday after Easter. And we have this incredible story that Michael read. And it's an unusual story. Some of the Easter stories are wrought with tears and surprise and grief and joy. And this one, The Road to Emmaus, is much more ordinary. They're just two people walking away from Jerusalem after everything that's happened. And they find that there's a person walking beside them and they don't recognize this person. We're told from scripture, so we know that this person is Jesus. But the two people walking don't realize who it is. And as they walk, Jesus talks to them and they talk to him. They relive the events in Jerusalem and Jesus talks to them about scripture. And then these people, as they end their walk, arrive close to their house, they invite Jesus to join them for a meal, which he does. And it is in the process of eating the simple meal that Jesus takes the bread and breaks it. And in the moment of the breaking of the bread, scripture says their eyes were opened and they realized who he was. And there's this incredible sense that Jesus is revealed to them and that they are able to see him. And that what they'd not been able to see, now they can see. And I think the power of this story for us is that it, it allows us to experience the risen Christ in our day-to-day -day ordinary living. Um, there's nothing extraordinary about it in some ways. It's very ordinary. Jesus is just walking along a road and he shares a meal with these two people. And in that ordinariness, he is revealed to be the risen Christ. And so as I was playing with this and working with this and thinking about it and trying to think, how can we as people of faith, how can we see the risen Christ? How can we understand this language and this experience when we don't have the opportunity to see him in his physicality, in his physical form? And what, what came to me is, is that Celtic Christianity could be helpful to us here because that is a form of Christianity that understands that Jesus, the risen Christ, is present everywhere, within us, around us, between us, and that there's a way in which God is not just above and beyond, but God is very much in the midst of us as we, as we live our lives, yet invisible. And so I was thinking one way that we might be able to understand this is to think in terms of being able to access what is invisible. And part of what I, I was thinking of is that we have become very attuned to the virus, which is invisible. And there's a way in which, from what is being discovered about the virus, we know that it can exist anywhere and we can't see it. And so we are being taught in an odd sort of way to fear something that is invisible. And the only way we know that it's present is by testing or, as we've all been told, about the symptoms. So we know that the virus is present, even though it's invisible, if we have a fever, a dry cough, or are short of breath. And those are the, the indications that the virus is visible. And of course, we know that there are people who are asymptomatic and the virus is present, but it doesn't manifest. But let's, let's work with the, the symptoms. And so the only way that we know that something that is invisible is present is by the symptoms. 
in this case with the virus. And to take that to the story of the road to Emmaus and to, to say that, that the people on the road are teaching us how to respond to something that is invisible, that they're giving us tools to see. And the first tool that we get from the scripture passage is that the people on the road, after they realize who Jesus is, look back and say, there was a sign, there was a symptom, so to speak. And it is that their hearts were on fire. And the passage says that as Jesus was walking with them and talking about scripture, it was as if their hearts were on fire. And I was thinking that if that becomes a way that we understand that we can perceive the invisible presence of the risen Christ, that might be one way that this scripture speaks to us. And so how do we experience our hearts on fire? And I was thinking that maybe a, just a, a very clear example is when we first fell in love. I mean, that sense of feeling that something is different in your life. I mean, you feel your heart doing something different. You feel something is happening to you and it's invisible. You're falling in love and there's a sense that your heart feels something different. And that's what these disciples felt, what they experienced, that their heart was on fire. And when they looked back, they knew that. And it was an indication that they had been with the risen Christ. And then the second symptom, so to speak, is their eyes were open. So that they looked back and they said, our hearts were on fire. And then there was a moment at which, when Jesus broke the bread, their eyes were opened. And they realized something new and different. They realized that they had been in the presence of Jesus, in the presence of the risen Christ. And does that happen? For example, falling in love, do you, did you feel this incredible heart expansion, this incredible sense that this person was somehow different for you? And then you recognize them as potentially a life partner. You recognize them as potentially a friend. You recognize them as someone who was important to you and your eyes were opened and you saw them in a new way or a different way. And so this sense of being able to read the symptoms, so to speak, of this invisible presence, this invisible way that Christ may be manifest to us. Are there ways in our lives that we can allow ourselves to feel that our hearts are burning and then to open our eyes and realize that Christ is present there? And I think this can happen in small ways and and ordinary ways. I mean, that's part of, again, the beauty of this passage is that the disciples were just walking with Jesus, just sharing a meal. There was nothing extraordinary about this. And if we can see in our lives, are there moments when we can feel that, that sense that our hearts are opening, that sense that something is happening, that sense that Jesus potentially is present? And if we can learn to know that those are signals for us, and then if we can follow those moments when we feel our heart being opened or our heart being touched, and then move through that to realizing that potentially Christ is present there. And just small examples. The other day I was walking down by the river, which, which I love to do, and Normally, I walk with purpose. I mean, it's to get exercise. It's to kind of get the blood flowing, especially when living in a small space for many, many hours on end. So there's usually a focus, and I'm usually very intent on walking with a certain speed. And the other day, I said to myself, why don't I just slow down and see what happens? And I started walking very slowly and noticed things I don't usually walk when I'm walking quickly. And one of the things I noticed is that on the ground all around me were these incredibly small purple flowers. And, and they were what my high school biology teacher used to call belly flowers. He said that you really can't totally appreciate these flowers unless you're flat on your belly and your face is almost on the ground and you're really, really close to them. And this, this sense, as I saw these flowers, there was that sense that my heart started to, to open, this, this sense that something really beautiful was just right there at my feet. 
and then to stay with that feeling, which I did, and then it, it shifts. And there's this sense of my eyes then were opened and it was, oh, this is God's created beauty. And so it moved from slowing down to see something I didn't normally see, these tiny purple flowers. And when I saw them to feeling this, oh, there's something really here that's, that's affecting me. And then to go through that feeling with that feeling to the sense that God, in fact, is alive in these flowers, that this is the creator, this is the risen Christ. This is the presence of God that I was able to see. A small, small example, and yet I think it happens potentially for us all the time, that, that there's so many ways in which our heart can be moved. The other, the other day I was reading about a 12-year-old boy, and maybe you've read this too, but he was, he's a Boy Scout in Canada. And he had been reading about nurses and doctors whose ears were starting to become raw because they were wearing masks so constantly. They were working much longer hours than they usually worked. And usually when they worked, they wore masks on occasion, but not all the time. And now they were having to wear masks through their entire shifts. And so as they wore their masks, in order that the masks were tight enough, the pressure was behind their ears and their ears were starting to get raw. And day after day, their ears were, were truly starting to hurt. And so this 12-year-old boy had read about this, heard about it, and he thought maybe he could think of something that would help. And he had a, th a 3D printer, and he started experimenting and trying to come up with something that might have helped. And he finally came up with this very simple tool. It's a plastic a plastic piece that has basically spikes going up and spikes going down that you can wear across the back of your head so that the people wearing the masks can put the elastic around this thing on the back of their head and it stays and then the pressure is taken off the ears of the people who are doing the health care. And I felt that same sense of heart opening when I read about this 12 year old kid. I mean it was like he had seen a problem. He had seen people who were working really hard and that as a result of the way they had to work, wearing masks, he'd seen that there was something wrong and he thought maybe he could do something. And even at 12 years old, this kid thought maybe I can help. And then he began to experiment. He began to work on something. And finally he created this very simple piece of plastic that now evidently healthcare workers are desperate to get because it makes a difference. It takes the elastic away from the back of their ears so they're able to work these incredibly long hours and not have to worry about this pain that comes from the back of their ears. But again, just that, that moment of just feeling my heart open as I read about this 12-year-old boy, just that he is able to respond in his own way out of his own life to the suffering that's happening now. And just this sense of being connected to him and feeling gratitude for him, feeling pride on his behalf, and just that sense of heart opening that then again leads to eyes being opened and, and recognizing that this is somebody who is working from a place of generosity, somebody who's working from a place of kindness, somebody who's working from their own ordinary life in order to give so that someone else's life can be less stressful. And feeling that Christ is present in that, in that kindness, in that generosity, the presence of Christ is revealed. And there's so many examples around us where we can feel that heart opening. We can feel something in us beginning to respond as the disciples did on the road to Emmaus. Feel some sense that, that we are being told that we're in the presence of generosity or kindness or love or compassion. 
And that when we feel that, when our heart responds to that, when our heart recognizes that, that we then can go the additional step and recognize that this is the presence of the risen Christ, hidden in and among those in the world, hidden in and among the plants and the trees, hidden in and among our families, hidden within our own thoughts and feelings. And so I believe that the invitation of this passage is to begin to trust our experiences of the invisible. We're being taught now to fear what is invisible. We're being taught to fear the virus, being taught that there is danger, invisible danger in our world. We can't see the virus. We don't know where it is. And we need to be afraid of that in order to protect ourselves. And so this, this fear that is worthy of our respect, so to speak. And it's a fear based on being attuned to something that is invisible. And I think the invitation of the Emmaus passage is to trust the presence of Christ, which is also invisible. And to begin to recognize it, to begin to see it, the way that the virus tells us it's present, if we have a fever or a cough, that we can begin to acknowledge and be aware of when the spirit is present, when we become attuned to these, the symptoms of the spirit, so to speak, that our heart is moved, that we feel just that something a little different, that again is writ large when we fall in love, but maybe very subtle when it's only seen a flower or when it's acknowledging the delivery driver who's risked something to bring something to our home or when we know that somebody is dying and they're alone, that our heart opens, but we know that the presence of Christ is even there and that we can trust the presence to be there because our heart opens and we can trust that the person who's alone may have that same experience. That there's no place where the spirit of Christ cannot reveal itself. And that is the promise of Easter. That even for people who are now in quarantine, even for people who are desperate in prisons and nursing homes, even people who are locked into poverty, even in these most desperate places, the spirit of Christ always is available. And the possibility of feeling that movement of heart, again, scripture says that the disciples felt that their hearts were on fire that language that <clears throat> somehow we are moved, somehow we are told that the spirit is, is present with us. And that's available to anybody, anywhere under any circumstances. And it is how we celebrate the risen Christ. It is how we claim that Christ is present in a world that is so desperately in need of peace and healing and love and generosity and compassion right now. And so as we let this passage come to us, come alive to us, as we hear the disciples say, you know, while we were on the road, our hearts, our hearts were burning within us. And then when they said that as Jesus broke the bread, their eyes were open. Can we also experience this burning of our hearts and the opening of our eyes and celebrate the risen Christ among us. May it be so. Amen. Amen. May our hearts be on fire and our eyes be opened. During this time when we are sheltering in place and we cannot offer our gifts in person, we ask that you send your offerings via snail mail to Merdell or Paul, um, and their addresses are in the announcements. If you need them, please uh, let us know. We'll get them for you. And now from within our homes, we bring to God the offerings of our hearts and lives. May our gifts be used to bring hope, healing, freedom, and sustenance to those in need. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. Thy will is my will. Heal me at death 
so that I may glorify God. Reveal that which needs to be revealed. Heal that which needs to be healed, so that I may glorify God. Let us pray. Holy God, we offer our gifts to you in these uncertain times. Trusting our gifts will be of help to those in need. May you use our gifts to bring healing, solace, and peace. In your many names we pray. Amen. Our final hymn today is In the Bulb There is a Flower. And I invite you to sing along with me on two of those verses. And I'm sharing with you my beautiful silk flower. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold of snow and winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed, until it's season, something God alone can see. Let us send each other forth with these words. We know Jesus is present among us, even in this very home. We will not let fear be louder than love, but with glad hearts and rejo rejoicing souls, we will sing God's praise, for we are Easter people. We are Easter people, and we are called to be able to see the risen Christ. And so our prayer is that our hearts may feel <clears throat> and know the presence of Christ in our lives and that that will change our lives and change the life of the world and that there will be healing, there will be generosity and compassion, there will be love and forgiveness and that is the way that we know that Christ is present. We are Easter people. May we be at peace. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Great. So good to see you.